All right, folks, and this week we got fog brushes. We got fog and smoke brushes from Seven Season Studios available on the Affinity Graphics website down below. Now, if you don't know, Seven Season Studios has partnered this year with Affinity Graphics. These guys are putting all of the Affinity tools in one place. So what we've made the commitment to, we're going to provide tools and tutorials, and every single one of the tools is free to download on Affinity Graphics. So step one, download the tool. Step two, let's roll those credits and get into the instructional tutorial. All right, gang, welcome to Seven Season Studios. Today we're gonna to be turning this into this. So we're gonna completely change the look and the feel of this piece. And we're gonna include all of this creepy fog using the Seven Season Studios fog and smoke brush pack available in the links below. So let's go ahead and get started. Now in your downloads, you're going to find this picture of a quaint little country house. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it on its ears. So we've got the background. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to rasterize it. So this makes it a pixel image and we're going to duplicate it. So come up here, right click and hit duplicate. And now let's call it modified. Now again, to change the title, all you gotta do is right click or left click, I'm sorry. No, right, left click on it and you're good to go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do now, we're going to turn down the brightness. Now we're gonna use an adjustment layer. Adjustments are here. And we're gonna turn down the brightness and the contrast. Now, I liked this image because we were able to get a lot of the brightness around this house in the foreground but we want to darken the background significantly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna turn down the brightness overall. Okay, I'd say right about there, you see I'm at about negative 70%, 72. But now here's the trick. I want this area to be brighter. So I'm going to come up with my gradient tool. You'll see that my brightness layer is selected and I'm going to pull a gradient. Now, with gradient layers, black conceals, white reveals. So what I wanna do, I wanna bring the white out to where I want it to be really dark, and I want the black to be where I really don't want a lot of that brightness. Now, if I click on the gray, notice here that this linear box appears, and if I click on this circle, it gets bigger. So let's go ahead now and go really dark on that side. Now, what am I really doing here? What I'm doing when we go back here, you'll see how now I can adjust the brightness. And right here, I'm telling the brightness, don't take full effect in this lower corner. You see how I'm adjusting the slider. So I want it to be in full effect over here. I want it to be concealed largely over here. And you'll see what the brightness is doing. So step one, Brightness with a levels adjustment, or I should say with a gradient effect. Now, because I got ahead of myself, let's make a levels adjustment. And the levels adjustment now, I'm gonna push the blacks. Now we're gonna go down. Now you see how this is consuming all of this area here? I don't want this either. So with my gradient tool, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull a gradient. Black conceals the effect, white reveals the effect. So in order to make this not really apply over near the house, I come up to here, I make sure my gray is selected, I click on the gray box, and I turn that black. Now, just to show you what's up, watch this. You see now how the levels effect is only where the white is. So this is really cool because now I'm able to adjust the levels in just one area of the picture, keeping my foreground largely intact. All right. So we've got a brightness adjustment. We've got a levels adjustment. Now we're gonna do another adjustment. I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to use what is called a channel mixer. Now, a channel mixer mixes the red, green, blue, and alpha channels around, right? And you'll see how they're perfectly balanced to create the composite. 
Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this channel mixer to the bottom. Now the stack is important. Channel mixer, brightness levels. And now I'm going to crank down the reds. All right, so I got the reds turned down and you see that it's kind of going green. I'm going to go ahead and just crank that down a little bit further here. All right, I'm at 53%. Cool. All right. Now, the channel mixer here, once you do this, you may have to adjust your levels. So let's push the blacks a little bit. And let's push the brightness a little bit. All right. I think we're pretty good there. So it's a little bit of adjustment. And now to offset this channel, what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our adjustment levels and I'm going to put in a lens filter. Now the lens filter, we took out a lot of the reds, so I'm going to shoot almost like I was going to shoot with the red filter. So you see down here, I'm working on my sliders over here and I'm getting to the red area. You see how it's coming red. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and crank up this density. Now you see how that tones down those greens a little bit. So this actually gives us our creepy dark look without being a comically green look. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy there at about, I don't know, maybe 75%. So let's check our layer. Channel mixer, lens filter, brightness, levels adjustment. All right, I think I'm pretty happy overall. Now, there's something called depth of field and there's something called kind of volumetric effects. Things closer to you are a little more detailed, they're a little lighter, and they're a little bigger. Those are the three characteristics. Things in the background are a little darker, less defined, and certainly are smaller. So the reason I like this is because these things in the background are now absolutely how I want them. So now we're gonna go through and the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to this group here. This is modified. I'm going to come up to the modified here. And now what I'm going to do, we're going to, oops, let's make sure that's on. Hold shift, select all the layers and group them. All right. Now, if you have the group, let's rename it. Modified group. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and add in some of this light back in because it's a little dark. To do this, we're going to create a mask layer. Mask layers are right here in the studio panel. And now with a mask layer, we're going to bring this up to the modified group. You see where the mask layer is? Now black conceals, white reveals. We want to reveal the background underneath because that's where our light is. So I come up to the modified group. I make certain my mask layer is selected. And now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to grab my brush. I'm going to grab a very common brush. Let's just go to the basics. I'm going to grab a normal 128 point soft brush. And now I'm going to come down here. And with the color black selected, remember black conceals. I'm now going to, with my brush, paint out the windows. Now to do this, let's look at our brush characteristics. I'm going to turn my flow up so that every stroke I touch on here is more meaningful. And you'll see that I'm going to work inside the window. And with the soft brush, one of the reasons I like working with the soft brush is that it will kind of cover that window area right here. I don't really have to spend a lot of time doing that. Now, same thing here. We're going to come down here and we're just going to paint in the window. Now, you can left bracket key to make that brush smaller. And if you had a tablet, a tablet does make this a lot easier. Okay. I'm using my mouse. I'm using the same tools that you guys would have even if you didn't have a tablet. 
So I'm not spending too much time on this as we have to keep this tutorial short and you don't want to watch me fill in windows for 20 minutes. But you see how we're able to bring back what's underneath this pixel there. Right, let's see what's up. Happy with this. Now let's do one more here. Now I'm going to make this just a very thin area here. Just enough to be dangerous. All right, now here's the trick. I'm going to right bracket up. I'm going to drop the flow to about 20%. And now, I've still got my black color selected, but now I'm going to paint a couple strokes here, and you see how we're getting this nice reflected light. All right, let's do that here. We're going to use the right bracket, and I'm coming up, and you'll see how I'm just adjusting my flow a little bit here to get just the illusion that this light is here. There was like three mouse clicks there, folks. It's not a lot. The same thing is going to be true over here. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, if that got a little too intense, you could always come down with a mask and you can drop down or raise the opacity of that layer. So you can do a lot with the adjustment. I'm actually quite happy with that. So now let's take the next step. Notice how we've done all of the modifications and now it's time to start adding those creepy fog effects. All right, so we're going to come in, we're gonna create a new pixel layer. Now a new pixel layer is in the layers tab and it's right here. And let's call this foreground fog. All right, perfect, foreground fog it is. Now, you should have downloaded the brush pack available at the link below there from Affinity Graphics or Seven Season Studios. And we're gonna come down to brushes and there's an entire lesson on how to import them so you should know how to import by now. And now we're gonna come down and we're going to work on the fog brushes. Now these fog brushes, you wanna work on the colors and now here's the way fog kinda of works. The fog closest to you in the foreground is gonna be a little bit lighter and it should obscure some of this foreground. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the color picker tool. We're gonna to grab a color that's pretty close and then I'm going to turn it that color. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna raise it up just a little hair. All right, now let's use the right bracket key. And now I'm just tapping here and you'll see how I'm making it just a little bit kind of obscure. So you can still see the background, but it's a little bit obscure. Now, here's the trick. We're gonna blend this just a little. We're gonna come up, make it a little lighter still, and we're gonna change up our brush a little bit. There are many different brushes that are included as part of this, and now, You'll notice how I'm not using the stamp like I'm not putting the stamp right in the middle of everything. I'm coming down and I'm just adding a little bit here and there. And you see that I got some pattern there that I don't like. Let's go ahead and manipulate that a little bit. All right, don't be afraid to use a brush a little bit bigger than what you need. I think we're pretty good right here. All right, that looks pretty cool. So you see how we used a lighter fog in the foreground color and how we use those brushes almost on their side. Now let's put some fog in this background. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new pixel layer and I'm gonna call this mid fog. And now with mid fog, it's back a ways from here. You want it to be a little bit lighter than this background 
but you don't want it to be so light that it takes away from the foreground. So what I would do in this brush pack, I've got some really nice linear fog brushes here. You see the shape of these is pretty cool, but that is way too light, right? So let's go to color. Let's come over here. And now there's a little bit more blue in this background. I don't know if you guys can see it on your monitor. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come down to the blues and I'm gonna go dark blue, right? I'm gonna go kind of a darkish blue. That's even a little too light for me still. All right, there we go. Now, that's a little bit too light. Now, check this out, this is awesome. With the mid fog, if you get it a color you don't really like, come up to the adjustment add an HSL adjustment. Now, it'll try to put that HSL adjustment somewhere that you don't want it. Where did it put it? All right, I put it at the very top. We're gonna to attach it to the mid fog layer. So now it's nested inside. And now you can come in and you can adjust the saturation of the fog. You can adjust the darkness of the fog. to the point where it actually looks pretty good. So that's actually darker than the foreground, so that meets that need. I'm gonna desaturate it a little bit, and then I'm gonna darken it up quite a bit. All right, that looks good. This HSL adjustment layer on the fog is crucial to the effect. You see how this now matches that a lot better. Now the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create one more layer, and I'm gonna call it Where's it putting those pixel layers? All right, we're gonna call it house fog. All right, so now this is going to be kind of a greenish because that blue doesn't look really good, right? So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna use my color picker. I'm gonna pull some off green there. I'm gonna make this off green. And now I'm gonna go just a little bit toward the aqua. When I say a little bit, I do mean a little bit. Let's grab the brushes. Let's find a nice brush. I'll try this one here. And I'm gonna turn it up. Now, that looks pretty good, but it looks a little bit nondescript. So I'm gonna come back to my color and I'm gonna raise it up toward the white just a little bit. I'm gonna shrink that down a little bit. All right, cool, and totally do that to whatever suits your taste, whatever floats your boat. All right, cool, so that's really how you can use these smoke and fog brushes. Now let's do this. Let's go ahead and move all of these, including your modified group, into a group. And let's call it adjustment. And you started out with this, and you got that. Started out with this, and you got that. That's actually pretty cool. All right, I know this tutorial ran a little long. I know we talked about a ton of stuff other than just the fog brushes, but I felt that if you knew how to use the tool, you'd be able to use the tool more effectively in creating the atmosphere that you were looking for. If you liked the video, go ahead and click subscribe. If you want to never miss a video, make sure that you sign up on YouTube. And if you're looking for more courses and tools, check out Seven Season Studios or Affinity Graphics at the link below. All right, have a good one.